one of the most universal things that people enjoy doing when they're at home is listening to music in the background. In my home, that's no different, and we always have some kind of music playing no matter what we're doing. Before, we'd normally wake the computer to find a playlist, or turn on the Bluetooth speaker, pair it with our phones and then press play. This method was becoming a bit of a chore though, because it wasn't the most convenient nor fastest way to get some music going. So I fixed that by picking up Apple's new HomePod Mini. So what's it like? Let's find out. This is Clembo from Zentech Life, where we love all things to do with lifestyle tech and gadgets. So, the HomePod Mini isn't Apple's first foray into the speaker arena. They released the original HomePod back in early 2018, advertising it as a room-filling sound experience in a small package. And generally, it lived up to its claims, with most critics highlighting its deep bass, ability to analyse the surrounding environment, and adjust the sound output to create the best sound experience. What isn't so appealing though, was the big price tag. 349 US dollars. Despite its impressive sound engineering and later price drop to $300 in 2019, it's still quite a bit more expensive than similar competitors such as the Sonos One and Amazon Echo Studio. Having said that, the OG HomePod was not a failure by any means. Since its release, it sold several million units, so there's definitely a market for Apple's HomePod brand. Fast forward three years and Apple seems to want the chunk of the more budget-friendly smart speaker market. The release of the HomePod Mini, which is essentially a miniaturized version of the original, also comes with an equally miniature price, just 99 US dollars. At just a third of the price, it's now even more affordable than ever to venture into Apple's smart home and audio system. Obviously, the sound it outputs isn't nearly as grand as the original HomePod, as the laws of physics still apply to Apple. The subwoofer and tweeters from the original have been replaced by one full range driver and dual passive radiators, which won't be able to produce the same room filling sound that the OG can manage. However, speaking as a very average consumer, the HomePod Mini provides a satisfactory listening experience, especially considering how tiny it is. The only other similar size speaker I have at home is the JBL Charge 3, which is around 5 years old by now, but seeing as it's fairly similar in terms of size, Here's a quick audio comparison for you. I'll leave it up to you to judge which one sounds better. Another great thing about the HomePod is that it also works as a voice assistant via Siri. Admittedly, Siri does have a bit of a bad rep compared to Amazon's Alexa and Google's Home Assistant, 
but seeing as I'm heavily invested in Apple's ecosystem, having Siri support is a bonus feature for me. As I mentioned earlier, when I wanted to put on some music before, it involved waking a computer or pairing with a Bluetooth speaker. But now, with the HomePod Mini always on and ready, it's much easier for me to start enjoying my music. For example, as I'm taking my shoes off after a long day of work, or walking towards the kitchen to grab a drink, I can simply tell Siri to start my favourite playlist. Also, did I mention how impressive the microphones on the HomePod Mini are? I've had smart home lighting installed for over a year now, and often use voice commands to trigger a lighting scene. Prior to getting the HomePod Mini, I was reliant on my iPhone and iPad, which usually involved having to really raise my voice to activate Siri. I'm sure some of you can relate to the unnatural feeling of almost shouting to change the lighting scene, or even skip a song, which becomes especially awkward when you have guests around. Now though, I can be meters away from the HomePod and it will still manage to pick up my voice at a normal conversational volume. As trivial as this sounds, it's actually quite a big quality of life improvement. Giving Siri commands just feels much more natural now and I no longer feel like a madman barking at my phone just to dim the lights. The HomePod Mini has also replaced an old iPad that I was using as a hub to control my smart home devices. This old iPad was my only home hub for a while, and I always worried about it running out of power, resulting in all my smart home devices becoming unresponsive. So I had a lightning cable permanently plugged in to ensure it was charging at all times. I kept this setup hidden away behind a stack of books on a shelf, as I didn't want anyone to accidentally unplug it and because it's not particularly pleasing to have an iPad lying around with a cable attached to it all the time. But now that I have the HomePod Mini, not only is it a functional speaker with a clean and aesthetic design, it also acts as my main home hub, which I don't have to hide away or worry about this power cable being disconnected. The iPad is still useful and does serve as a secondary hub in the event that the HomePod Mini does fail, but it's no longer hidden away behind some books. Another question some of you might have is, does the HomePod perform any of the automations or smart home functions any faster than my old iPad? Well, for now, not that I've noticed, but that might change with future upgrades to my smart home devices, thanks to Thread support on the HomePod mini. What is Thread? It's a low energy, low latency wireless standard that promises to provide a faster and more stable network between connected devices. One of the main benefits of Thread over ZigBee or Z-Wave, which are the most common industry standards currently, is that it doesn't require a separate hub or bridge device to communicate. If you've ever looked into smart home technology, you'll probably have seen just how much of a convoluted mess it can be when you mix and match products from different manufacturers, each requiring their own hub or bridge. Thread hopes to do away with all of this by allowing all devices, regardless of manufacturer, to communicate with each other directly. It's an exciting connectivity standard that will hopefully iron out issues that have plagued smart home devices in recent years. And now, with Apple and Google on board, we can hopefully expect many more manufacturers to add thread support in the coming years. I've had the HomePod Mini for a few weeks now, and it's mostly been a positive experience. But this review wouldn't be fair without also mentioning some of the downsides. Firstly, it lacks a functional display which would have been a nice addition for reasons such as checking the time or even seeing what the current volume of the speaker is set to. At present, the HomePod will resume music at the volume it was last playing at, which is sometimes set very low during the previous night's listening session. So there have been several occasions where I needed to add a follow-up command to set the volume to a more audible level. Speaking of volume, I also wish the two touch-based volume buttons were more prominently displayed. They can be very hard to see, especially when you have music playing and the center status light is on. Another thing I feel that the HomePod Mini is missing is a 3.5mm line-in jack. I've heard of people who get two units and set them up as a pair of stereo speakers with their Mac or Apple TV, but for that usage scenario, I'd much prefer a hardwired connection. Also, please don't mistake the HomePod Mini as a Bluetooth speaker, because it doesn't support Bluetooth audio streaming. It's strictly AirPlay only. So if you're hoping to use this with a non-Apple device, you're straight out of luck. And lastly, as I mentioned earlier, Siri is still trailing behind in functionality as a voice assistant when compared to Amazon Alexa and Google Home. Also, there are far fewer HomeKit compatible devices. So if you were hoping to purchase this as a home hub to kickstart your smart home journey, you may find that there are many more compatible devices if you go with Alexa or Google Home instead. So that's my average consumer review on the HomePod Mini. 
I hope you found it useful hearing how it fits into my family's lifestyle and home setup. Generally speaking, if you're not looking for mind-blowing sound, but you are deep in the Apple ecosystem, and you're looking for a way to make music listening more convenient, the HomePod Mini is a worthy candidate. And for only US$99, it's much more affordable when compared to its bigger brother. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Your comments are always appreciated, so feel free to leave one down below. If you liked my video, show me some love by hitting that thumbs up button. And if you want to see more content from me about lifestyle tech and gadgets, then hit that subscribe button too. Thanks again, and catch you in the next one.